Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you a simple method for dodging and burning your photos using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.10 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and of course, I'll include a discount link to this in the description. You can also support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. This is a free photo from Pixabay. You can click the free download button here, and I just went with a 1920 by 1280. So a quick overview of what dodging and burning is. This was something that was used back in the film development days. And when you apply dodge to a photo, it's going to brighten up the areas of the photo where you apply that dodge. And when you apply a burn to a photo, it's going to darken up those areas. These were techniques that used to be applied directly to the film negative to create these results in the final photo. By the way, I will be using a Wacom tablet for this tutorial. So if you have one, feel free to follow along. I have a tutorial on how to set up your Wacom tablet in GIMP. If you haven't checked that out already, I definitely recommend you do. Uh, but you can use a standard mouse for this tutorial as well if you don't have a Wacom tablet. But I'm going to come over here and show you guys there actually is a dodge burn tool within GIMP. There are tons of tool options down here that you can adjust and that gives this tool a lot of flexibility. You could switch between dodge or burn and you could switch between the various ranges of your image. You can also adjust the exposure of the tool here. But the main issue with this tool is that it is a destructive form of editing, meaning that the edits you're going to make to your image are going to happen directly on the image. They're not going to be on an adjustment layer. So that that kind of takes away some of the flexibility with this tool. So I'll dive into my simplified method now and I'm going to start by going over here to File, Open Recent, and I'm just going to click on my photo. So this simplified method not only takes less time to do, but it also allows you to make your adjustments on different layers. And so you can always go back and erase those changes that you made to your image, or you can make adjustments to them so it adds a little bit of a non-destructive aspect to your dodging and burning. So I'm going to come over here and start by just duplicating my main photo. And let me actually change the name of this photo to Model. And then I'll double click on this and change the name of this to Dodge. And I'm going to switch from my Dodge and Burn tool over to my Paintbrush tool. And you can see that I have a brush with a hardness of 0 to 5 set here. So this is a pretty soft brush. And you can adjust the size using the size slider here, or you can use the little circle on your Wacom tablet. And of course, you can use the left or right brackets on your keyboard. And if I scroll down a little bit, I actually have the dynamics off here. This is not something that you need turned on for this tutorial. The brush dynamics are going to basically add pressure sensitivity or other effects depending on which dynamic setting you select. But we can just turn the dynamics off for this particular tutorial. You can copy my other settings here. And now what I need to do is come over here to Colors, Curves. And remember, when you apply a dodge to a photo, it's going to brighten that area of the photo. So with this Curves tool, what we're going to do is click on the center of the curve here and drag it upwards. And that'll make this brighter. We're looking at the highlights of our image, the brighter parts of our image, and determining how far up we want to turn them up with the curves here. And I'm going to hide that with the preview option. So there's a before, there's an after. That looks pretty good, so I'll click OK. Now what I'll do is I'll come over here and right click and come down to Add Layer Mask. And under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'm going to choose Black Full Transparency and click Add. So that is going to mask out everything we just did, but we're going to paint those back in with our paintbrush. So I'm going to come over here and make sure I have white selected as my foreground color. And I'll make sure I'm clicked on my paintbrush tool. And now I'm just going to paint strokes here of our model. And you can see that as I do that, it's going to brighten up those areas of the model. And I'm keeping everything within the model, or at least I'm trying to. And by having this really soft brush, it's going to help us blend in those brush strokes that we're creating. So if we had a harder brush, it would create a hard line, and it would be easy to see where we created these brush strokes. And if I come over here, I can hide the image, so that's before. And if I unhide that, there's after. And now what I'll do is I'll use the wheel on my tablet here to turn the size of my brush down. Or, of course, you could use the left or right brackets on your keyboard. 
And now I'm going to paint these highlights right here, these smaller highlight areas. And you don't have to get too crazy with it, just the areas that you think could use a little bit more brightness on here. So really any areas that have a little bit of light hitting it. So there's a before, there's an after. Now we're going to perform the same thing but for the burn portion. So I'm going to come over here to our model layer and I'm going to duplicate this inside of my layers panel. And I'm going to click and drag this one up to the top. And now I'll double click on here and I'll name this burn and hit the enter key. And I'm going to make sure that my white color is still selected here. And now I'm going to come up here to colors, curves. And this time I'm going to darken my color, so I'll click on the curve and drag it downwards instead of upwards. And you can see that's darkening my image up. And I'm just keeping an eye on the darker portions of my image because that's what I'm going to be adjusting with this. So I'll click OK. Now I'll come over here and right click. And if you're using the pen tablet, you can just click this little button here on your pen. And then I'll come down here to Add Layer Mask. Under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'll choose Black Full Transparency and click Add. So again, that'll hide all of our effects there. I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool again, increase the size of my brush using the little wheel on my tablet. And we don't want to increase it too much there. And again, with white as my foreground color, and let me actually come over here and adjust my zoom. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. But with white as my foreground color, I'm going to paint on the layer mask. This time, I'm going to paint on the darker areas of the image. So anywhere on the image where you think that we can darken it up a little bit more, and I'll hit Control Z because I accidentally painted on the model. But any area where you think we can darken up some of these areas to add a bit of contrast. So anytime you darken dark areas and light and light areas, that will create contrast in your image. So there's a before, there's an after. And if I shift click on that first model layer, you can see that was what our original photo looked like. And then if I shift click on that show hide button again, here's what it looks like now. And the cool thing about this technique is now we can come back to our layers and we can adjust the opacity here. So that allows us to sort of turn down the effect a bit. And I can always try this layer as well. You can also apply a layer mode to these layers if you want. That's not really something I want to do here. Another thing about this technique is I can right click on the layer and I can delete the layer mask and start over, or I can come over here and delete the entire layer and start from scratch. And none of this is going to do anything permanent to our original image, so we'll always have that copy of the original image. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.